Hey friends, we're in 1 Timothy chapter 3 today where Paul goes through a list of prerequisites or requirements or uh, measures of what it means to be an elder for the church of Jesus or a deacon, a servant minister of the church of Jesus. And he gives us that list, not as an all-encompassing list. This is not the complete checklist for every elder to make sure they do all of these things well. Nor is he saying an elder must be perfect and have everything perfect in his life, in his family, and so forth in order to serve. Nor is he even saying that uh, an elder can't fail and still be an elder. There can be recovery. There can be uh, work that is done to restore elders and pastors and leaders when it's done appropriately. Those are, those are all adding to the scripture. What he is saying is the office has a high calling and the role of leading the church is one of the highest duties a servant can ever have. Don't forget that being a servant is the calling of Christ to all of his followers. Remember, remember the parable of the servants and the, the parable of the talents where he gave his servants talents. And then he said at the end, when they did well, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. God values our servant heart. He even told his disciples near the end of his three-year instruction campaign with them, he would say, you know, I'm going to judge your leadership not by the power you wield, but by the service you provide, how the last will be first, the servant will be rewarded the greatest. And so then in this ex explanation from Paul about what the elders and the deacons and the leaders of the church should be like, he, he does end with this great statement that just kind of gets buried and forgotten when you have the list. The list kind of gets in the way of the purpose and the calling. He says in verse 13, those who serve well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. Those who serve well. Being an elder is not a power position. In fact, being an elder has no power by itself. It's the it's the communion of the elders, the unity of the elders that carry the power of the church. They together as a body function as one, and that's, that's where the power and the authority lies. No, the elder demonstrates his servant spirit, and by doing so, the service of the elder creates the gain. And what does he gain? He gains honor. Those that serve well bring honor, not just to their name, but to the name and reputation of that church family. Those who serve well bring honor to the name and reputation of Jesus and his church. And not only that, they gain assurance. There's something that is strong and attractive and powerful when an elder or a deacon or a leader or a minister or a group leader or a children's worker or a student coach or a, a set up and tear down person or a hostess, when, when those people serve well, the church gains and they grow stronger in their faith. And you know this to be true, not because of the task that got accomplished or not because the church was able to function well, you know it to be true. Because when you serve well, whether that's at work or in a classroom or in your home setting, when you serve well, there's something inside of you that feels stronger, like you accomplished something, like you gained something. Paul is bringing to light how God designed our hearts and our souls to work. When we serve well, we gain assurance. And that assurance is the faith that Jesus is faithful to his promise. And we, by serving him, are being faithful to our relationship with him. So friends, I want you to look at your life a little differently. Quit measuring it by the tools of this world. The world measures success by money and possessions and power. We measure success by the honor of a name and the assurance of our faith. We measure it by what's inside, not what's outside. And as you do, you'll discover the beauty and the power of being a servant. 
And friends, if you're not serving in a church, in a family, in a work environment, find a way to serve. When you do, you'll gain that assurance. God bless you as you do. We'll see you again next time.